Hi, this is Susan Howard. I teach jewelry making at Healthy Living OKC. We have jewelry class every Wednesday from two to four. And it's open to anyone who has a love of jewelry, is an expert jewelry maker, intermediate, or a novice who would like to learn how to make jewelry because we can teach you how. We have all kinds of classes. Sometimes we have scheduled special techniques or a, a certain type of jewelry making or jewelry item, a project. Often we have labs. We do have that scheduled. But we welcome you anytime and to prepare you if you are a new person or haven't done jewelry in a while. I'm going to show you some basic items that you would need to make jewelry and give names to them so you understand what they are and you can be ahead of the curve. Uh, we also have supplies in our room, so if you have nothing, come and see if you like to make jewelry with what we have on hand, and then when you're hooked, you might want to go out and purchase your own. So today I'm just going to go through the things that you would need to make a, a basic necklace or a basic bracelet. First of all, you need beads of some kind. Now beads come in all sizes, all colors, all shapes. You can see here they don't have to be round. Here's a star. Here's sort of an oval, and here's one that's faceted. Anything that you find that is drilled through it so you can poke a wire through it, place a wire through it, is a bead. You can also make your own beads using some of our findings, and we'll show you how to do that. And findings are the articles that we use to connect and join all of the beads and the jewelry together. Uh, another thing that you would need to make beads or make a necklace are jump rings. Jump rings come in all sizes. They are a single circle that you open with the tool and then connect your items. And you can equate these to the language and for communication and and for writing A and D. Connects things together, conjunctions. Jump rings are used to connect things together. And without jump rings, I don't know that you could make jewelry. We also have a split ring, which looks like a keychain holder, and that goes around one and a half times, almost two times, and those can be used as well. These are called head pins and eye pins. A head pin looks like a real skinny nail, has a nail head on it. They come one inch up to four inches. And then we have an eye pin. An eye pin is like the eye of a needle. It has a loop or a circle on the end, and that's available where you can put a jump ring or a wire through that or another head or eye pin and elongate that. Those come in all the metal colors. So you've got silver gold. You can buy them in copper, antique copper, brass, bronze, all of those wonderful colors. Um, something else you would need for making necklaces, of course, are what you put your beads on you put them on wire. And if you're going to the store looking for this, look for beading wire, not wrapping wire, which is quite different, but beading wire. I have some in point .45 size and point .38 for basic bead making. Any of the sizes that says beading wire is fine. And just like um, our other metal findings, like the head pins and the jump rings, they come in all of the metal sizes, colors. Here is copper, and it's .45, and there here, this is a brass or bronze. So you can get those even in other colors like red, green, blue, they come in all different colors. Other things you would need to build a simple necklace would be spacers. These spacers over here, again, come in all the metal colors. And they can be pretty beads, like seed beads, or they can be the metal items in any shape. And these are set in between your featured beads to really make your beads stand out on your necklace or bracelet, or to be used as filler, maybe near the end where you're going to put a clasp. So um, um, spacers are very important. Uh, of course, it's very important to end your necklace with something that will secure the wire. So that are called crimp tubes or crimp, um, crimp tubes or crimp rounds. They can come in any color. Again, these are silver and any size. You've got some tiny, tiny, tiny little ones for the thin, thin wire, and you've got heavier ones. I recommend using sterling or silver plated. Those are the strongest, but they, again, they come in all the metal colors. Those are actually used on the wire near the clasp at the end of the necklace like a fist to hold the wire so tightly that the beads and the clasp will not come loose. So those are very important too. And then we have clasp. 
clasp comes in all different kinds. Here is a magnetic clasp, very handy. The lobster claw clasp that you see on so much jewelry in tiny size or a large. And of course those have a spring in them so they just open like that. You would hook that on to a jump ring on the other side of the necklace. There's your clasp. Then we've got toggle clasp, which come in all the metal colors. These are very interesting. This is a long, elongated um, end, like a stick or a wand, that would go through and secure your necklace like that. Those are actually, in my opinion, easier to use as we get older and our hands get a little iffy than the lobster claws. But all of those are available. They're all good ends. And see how magnetic that is? It picked up all of the jump rings. The, the, um, the magnetic ones are good too, the strong ones. Here's something else that you might hear um, talk about. This is a bale, a pinch bale. So if you were to have, you could, you would feed this part, it's a tube, onto a wire to hold a pendant. And this pendant pinches, it's got pinchers on the end, it pinches into something to hold it and secure it. Um, let's see, oh, we've got charm bales over here. These can go on an elastic cord bracelet. And on a lap, when you work with Alaska, you don't, elastic, you don't need the cramp tubes or beads, and you don't need the ends, the clasp, because you would tie a knot after you put all of your beads on. You would tie a knot, this is how I do it, and then I glue that knot inside this that I have fed onto the cord, these charm bales, because you can glue to the inside wall of the charm bales and not see your knot. And of course, the charm bales, you can see they have little loops on the end. So we'd use a jump ring to connect and jump ring to connect to this and a charm like this. Because the charms that you can buy in the jewelry sections come with little loops on the end, just waiting for a jump ring to attach it to something else you would use on a bracelet or necklace. Here are pendants. You have lots of pendants on your jewelry at home. Some come already to string on a wire or a chain. Um, others come with a bale or we can, we've got bales we can attach like this one, a pinch bale. Um, some come with nothing. You would have to use a jump ring on that to attach it to something else or to attach it to your wire or cord. You can also make jewelry using cord like this in various sizes. This is Greek leather. You can use ribbon. We use all kinds of things in our class. Uh, beads usually come strung. When you find them at a bead store, they're usually strung like this, and you just cut them apart with scissors and use the beads as you need to when you're building your necklace or your bracelet. Um, if, you, if you want to use something from nature, for example, a shell, I used a head pin that we talked about. I used a two inch head pin. I put on all of my beads and see as I said, beads can be anything. I've got some round, but I also have mother of pearl that are not in any particular shape, but they're drilled, so they're a bead. And I put it through here. I used a tool to bend and loop the end of the straight end of the head pin onto a jump ring and now that's ready to feed through a chain. Now the tool, oh the chain, a chain, you can use a chain. Um, the tools over here, these are some of the basic tools. These four on the end are some type of the needle nose pliers or pliers. Needle nose are pointy. Um, we've got flat end pliers and then these are round nose pliers. All of these can be used to bend um, head pins, to pull wire through beads, to open and close the jump rings. So any of these tools, these are my favorite. If you're just going to get one, I recommend the round nose plier. And then you would need cutters to cut the wire. Some of the pliers will have cutters built in. And then to make wire jewelry that you feed onto wire, bead onto wire, you need a crimp tool, a crimper. And it has special grooves in it to where you squeeze the crimp tubes in certain ways, and we can teach you how to do that, to hold the end of the wire near the clasp so your jewelry is secure. 
Now, with these basic tools, with these basic items, you can make something like this that may look complicated, but it's not. Everything I showed you um, goes into here, or there's some samples over here as well of necklaces. It just depends on what type of beads, what type of things you want to use, but with the basic knowledge and the basic items and tools that I've told you about, you can make any of these, and we'll show you how.